Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And just a disclaimer, this will be a longer video. So grab your snacks, grab your popcorn, tea, whatever it is you drink or snack on. Go ahead and grab that because this will be a longer video. So I pulled up this article again, this great article here from, from Mike over at Light Reading. I will leave a link to it in the description so you guys may check it out. So we officially still don't have a T-Mobile blog post about them getting the Auction 108 license. And that that has clear, clearly been is, is done and over with. The FCC okayed it like 72 hours ago. And then as of 229, 2024, they officially uh, transferred the license over to T-Mobile. So T-Mobile has actual access now to the Auction 108 license. So I wanted to talk about that in, in, in this video because I think people still aren't able to wrap their heads around how big of a player T-Mobile actually is now in the market. And it's, it, it's all factual and out there for everyone to see. Now, arguments and debates can still be had about how T-Mobile got there. You know, they, were, they, they, they weren't fully regulated. I mean, th th there's always arguments and debates. The FCC shouldn't have allowed the merger to go through. Those are, you know, those are still arguments that, and debates that are still had to this day. But it's over and done with. So now we got to move forward and we got to analyze the, the, the new T-Mobile now. I know that's what they, that's what they talked about during the, uh, the, the merger proceedings, that they are now the new T-Mobile if this is closed. But I think now they are really the new T-Mobile. They are a major big player now in the market today. And that's clearly the reason why AT&T was complaining to the FCC. It wasn't because of the spectrum and, and it wasn't because of any of that. It was because AT&T has never had the competitive threat from another mobile network operator like they do in T-Mobile. Between them and Verizon, there was always a back and forth, always. No matter what it was, it was always a back and forth. And, and AT&T was very comfortable in that, in that second place. They were always very comfortable. It was always Demo Verizon. And Sprint and T-Mobile could never really compete and, and, and really do anything to, to uh, get AT&T and, for that matter, even Verizon to, to really respond much. But now it's a totally different story. And it started, it started with the merger closing. T-Mobile really didn't have to divest much spectrum. They, 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 they had to divest 800 megahertz, which Dish is not even going to buy. They made that very clear yesterday. So T-Mobile still has to put that up for bid. But who's going to buy that? <coughs> Excuse me. Who's really going to buy a mostly 5, five by 5 megahertz block? And in the border regions, it's only three by three megahertz. So it's, is Verizon really going to climb all sites again for a five by five megahertz block? That's the question you got to ask yourself. Is it great for them to have that? Yes, because they can actually deploy this uh, band 26 as N26 and actually have a dedicated low band layer for NR, which they really don't have today besides uh, 850 uh, N5, but they don't have that at a, at a nationwide scale. So from that perspective, <coughs> band 26 might be, you know, something that they look into. Even AT&T might look into that. But then again, you know, there's the spectrum screen. They, they got a lot of low band. Can they, can they really get more low band? That will come up in debates as well. So yes, T-Mobile really didn't get any divestitures that affected any of the spectrum that Sprint owned. So Sprint owned PCS and 2.5 and 800. T-Mobile already had AWS and T-Mobile had some PCS as well. So they combined all of that. And that was already the first sign that Verizon and AT&T were going to take on the biggest mobile network operator competition 
from a network perspective purely that they've ever seen in, in the industry in the last, you know, 10 to 20 years. So now, not only did T-Mobile get the merger through, they also got more mid-band in C-band and DOD, and they just closed Auction 108, which allows them to compete much better in rural America. So they're, they're a serious threat now. And AT&T is acknowledging that right away. Verizon doesn't want to speak up publicly because they are the premium best network, so they don't want to admit any competitive pressure. AT&T is, is beyond that. AT&T is like, no, 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 no. We don't care about the, the most premium network. We've never claimed that. We, we feel this competitive pressure. We don't have a, a similar spectrum portfolio, so we are going to complain to the FCC. That's AT&T's position, that, and that's clearly the position that they've taken. I saw the FCC document. AT&T is mentioned in that document a lot. So they're feeling that competitive pressure. And T-Mobile is continuing to expand new cell site each and every quarter, I'm told. And now, across 11,000 sites roughly today, where 2.5 is already deployed in small market rural areas, T-Mobile very shortly is going to be able to widen N41 in a lot of these areas to bring even more competition. All of the spectrum just fuels T-Mobile's growth while they're already growing. This is not something that they're trying to jumpstart. They're not trying to jumpstart growth like, like Verizon is trying to do. No, T-Mobile's already growing. This is going to fuel them to grow even more. Enterprise, small business, uh, rural, right? They're, they're still trying to grow share in rural. They, had, they, they went from single digits to like 17%, so that's huge. And they're also trying to grow the home broadband market. And in, in, in rural, where you're trying to close the digital divide, that's more important than ever. And that's, what's, that's what Auction 108 is going to allow T-Mobile to do. So I can't stress enough. And this is, this is all factual. This is not just taking one side. This is, you, can see the, you can see it in the numbers. T-Mobile is going to do a lot with C-Band and DOD. Over the coming years, they can put that. They can put C band on 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 C RAN. They can put N forty one on C RAN. I mean, they can play with that however they want to. They can still use millimeter wave. They got that too. I mean, there's a lot to go around for T Mobile, and in a lot of these areas where they now have this 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 massive amounts of spectrum, they are still underrepresented when it comes to market share. So they're trying to grow to something more meaningful and, and, if you will, fair share between the carriers that that's really the ultimate competition for Verizon and AT&T. It just simply is. Now T-Mobile is in a position where they can strike these deals with Ericsson and, and partnerships with all these other companies. Is there still some, some gaps in network size to close? Yes, that will pretty much always be the case. But T-Mobile has figured out a way to close the market perception by being who they are, by being a strong brand, pushing marketing, and actually deploying this new coverage to where they are able to close the perception. It would be one thing if T-Mobile was just telling people, oh, we got 5G this, we, we're doing this with the network. But if they're not actually reaching all of these people, then it would be a totally different story. And I know, and I know, trust me, I know there's still areas that they don't cover. It might even be within your zip code that they don't have any coverage. But you best believe on the POR tool, they're, they're looking at these areas to, to deploy something within at least the next two to three or, or more years. They want to close that perception gap once and for all. And it's going to take some more time because they're, they're involved in a lot of projects right now. They're trying to harden sites, right? The hardening project I told you guys about a while back, it's meaning backup generators going to towers. They're, they're you know, still trying to uh, deploy N41 to a bigger scale. But that's mostly in 
in rural America. They've already mastered the most of the, you know, metro, suburban, because they've had a head start. You know, and, and we can add that in there too. Not only did they get the merger pushed through, they got mid-band spectrum like two years before the competition had any. So yes, I'm taking all of that into consideration. So they 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 still have a lot to do, right? And then there's all this merger and acquisition talk that I that I told you guys a long time ago. I maintained the position and opinion that T-Mobile will will be still doing merger and acquisitions. AT&T and Verizon, not much, right? And we're really, we really aren't hearing any rumblings about that. Most of the M&A talks right now in, in, in today's space, you see T-Mobile, you see Comcast, you see Charter. You don't hear too much Verizon and AT&T in there. And usually, like I say, where there's smoke, there's fire. So you got to take that into consideration. You know, T-Mobile even mentions U.S. Cellular at the quarterly earnings. They mention, you know, they mention some other players. Now we're hearing them in talks possibly with Altice. So they're looking at opportunities. And now that they have some, some leeway on free cash flow, they have some additional leeway in the debt market, they could get a big cable player if they choose to. You know, Maybe they're doing it for fiber assets with Altice. Altice, I'm, I'm told, has solid amounts of fiber. And then, you know, that would be FTTH, fiber to the home for T-Mobile, where, you know, they, they expand it that way. Fine with me. Maybe they do fiber to the cell. However they're doing it, right? If it's not to your liking because they're not deploying fi their own fiber to the cell, it doesn't matter to T-Mobile. T-Mobile... If the leasing model works for them today, they will continue leasing fiber to the cell. If there's five players in a, in a market that, that, that serve fiber, T-Mobile will strike a deal that favors them. That's how competition works. Somebody's going to knock on T-Mobile's door and say, hey, we see, we see you're currently with Zayo. If you come with us, we'll undercut them by X amount of dollars. That's how that works. That's why the leasing model works for T-Mobile because in a lot of areas, there's lots of fiber players that they can choose from. And of course, again, I will acknowledge there are areas where the fiber competition is limited. And in those areas, you know, T-Mobile, they do have to bite the sour apple. If there's only AT&T and one other company and, you know, that other company really doesn't have fiber at scale... They got to choose AT&T, then they're going to have to pay the rate of what AT&T charges because AT&T knows that, hey, look, there's really nobody else for them to pick. So they're going to pay what they're going to pay with us. So, again, this is this is good for competition. This is good for everybody at scale. T-Mobile now has all of the spectrum that they intended to have now in, in their portfolio, and that includes Auction 108. So now I myself, again, this is just my opinion, I fully expect in the coming months T-Mobile to have another analyst day because now the, the, the game changes. Now you have auction 108 and now you're actually lighting that up and putting that on air. You have 11,000 sites deployed with the radio. So now your FWA numbers are going to change to 7 to 8 million is now way different because you guided that seven to eight million before you even had auction 108. So now we're talking nine, 10, maybe 10, 11 million with auction 108. That is a very strong possibility because a lot of areas are going to get much more spectrum versus what they previously had. So it's, it, it's really time to acknowledge T Mobile is now a big player. They got all of the spectrum assets that they that they were that they were eyeing to get several years ago in their position. Of course, they still have to they still have to tweak and and, and do things over the years. You know, it's not just hey, let me just stop and and now we rest. No, they still have to they still got to work with some of the leasing agencies to get this to get actually own the spectrum two dot five. There's still some leasing out there that's set to expire with with other companies that own 2.5 that T-Mobile will have to work through and work with, you know, like Sonic Wave, and there's several others that they may still have to buy 
but they will work through that over the years and they will they will analyze internally and and they will check on that they they still have to you know they still have to expand coverage you know no matter how big the network is today it can always be better and it can always be bigger so let's not forget that and then you know there's always there's always you can always do better as a company no matter how you look at it from from whatever angle you look at it you can always do better T-Mobile can do better on T-Mobile Tuesdays they can enhance the 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 whole magenta status they can put more new new deals that that might reach another part of the base right currently what they have in there today might not be what what makes you excited right you might not be a frequent traveler you might not like hilton whatever right there is always a way to better yourself as a company and i think t-mobile is is really trying to do that in the most effective and efficient way for them because now they are a bigger player and they're still trying to grow so they 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 have to take a balanced approach they can no longer just undercut and and cut this and cut that and give you free this and free that that's that's no longer going to work at this as this new T-Mobile. I think we've already figured that out and established that. But the future is bright at T-Mobile, and it's great for the industry because this is going to keep AT&T clearly on their toes because they keep pushing back on, on, on T-Mobile. Verizon is also looking at auction 108, right? They're, they're not talking about it publicly, but trust me, they are internally looking at auction 108 now that T-Mobile actually has this. And they're, and they're analyzing and looking at how does that affect their business. You know, T-Mobile having the additional auction 108 spectrum and now going into these rural areas with 140, 160 megahertz of 2.5, how does that affect Verizon's business? They are looking at that. Trust me on that. Because Verizon for a long time in a lot of these areas has been really the only option overall. Now T-Mobile moves in with all this N41, with all this home broadband talk for you know 60 bucks it, it, it's a difference maker and, and verizon is acknowledging and looking at that trust me so let me know your thoughts in the comments let me know if if you've already wrapped your you have wrapped your head around like yes t-mobile is really a bigger player and they are bringing the heat to the competition you know let us know in the comments like share subscribe if you're new follow my social media outlets this is tyrone with tech life see y'all in the next one peace